Hello, and welcome to the Historic New Orleans Collections video series, Following the Beat on the Street, our brief look at the history of New Orleans brass bands and their connections to second lines. I'm Dwayne, THNOC staff and saxophonist for Kings of Brass. And I'm Danny, the Knox staff and musicologist. We are here in our current exhibition, Dancing in the Streets, Social Aid and Pleasure Clubs of New Orleans. Looking at all these photographs of club parades, I was thinking you can almost always hear a second line before you see it coming down the street. Yeah, what would a second line be like without a brass band? Probably a big communal walk down the street. Here's what we've discovered. New Orleans brass bands are rooted in tradition and fueled by innovation. They're the lifeblood of second lines. Over the last 40 years, New Orleans brass band music has continued to evolve into a dynamic spectrum of playing styles. Out of the fertile training ground of youth bands, like that of Fairview Baptist Church Band, grew two branches of the brass band tree. Musicologist Matt Sakakini describes one branch as traditionalists, whose repertoire, playing style, and dress continue in the mode of the early 20th century brass bands. The other he calls experimental, bands that push the boundaries of the brass band form. Yet the branches often overlap. Some bands perform traditional music for formal events and funerals, then swap to a modern set list for festival stages and second lines. Others, like the Treme brass band, straddle both styles at once. Today, bands continue to play an essential role in New Orleans culture. They energize each second line Sunday, continuing a legacy that ensures that the beat goes on. Two important figures in the traditionalist branch are clarinetist Dr. Michael White and trumpeter Greg Stafford. In 1981, White created the original Liberty Brass Band, performing the repertoire and style he was taught by older cats like Doc Paulin and Danny Barker. In 1984, Stafford became band leader for the long-standing Young Tuxedo Brass Band. He also plays with Liberty. Stafford aims to uphold the tradition taught to him as a young musician in the Fairview Band. After organizing Danny Barker's funeral, Greg Stafford, Benny Jones, and Fred Johnson founded the Black Men of Labor Social Aid and Pleasure Club in 1994. This organization is dedicated to the preservation of traditional brass band music and parading styles. In addition to Black Men of Labor, more than a dozen new social aid and pleasure clubs hit the streets in the 80s and 90s. This period also saw the formation of new bands, many of which experimented with incorporating the popular music of the day, just as bands had done at the turn of the 20th century. In 1983, Rebirth Brass Band began to fuel second lines and parties. Founded by brothers Phil and Keith Frazier, Kermit Ruffins, and other bandmates from Joseph S. Clark High School, Rebirth followed in the funkier footsteps of the Dirty Dozen. Their original music remade the standard second line repertoire and heavily influenced the music of their contemporaries. Yet their sets often begin with a traditional tune to show, as drummer Keith Frazier says, where the music has come from before demonstrating where it has gone to. In 2011, Rebirth became the first New Orleans brass band to win a Grammy. Several bands emerged onto the scene in the 1990s, including the Soul Rebels, the Hot Eight, and the Panettes. Perhaps the most experimental of the three are the Soul Rebels. Led by Lamar LeBlanc, the Soul Rebels were trained by Olympia brass band leader Milton Batiste and moved on to enhancing their sound with elements of hip-hop, soul, funk, reggae, R&B, and even the use of drum machines. With a sound better suited for the stage, the Soul Rebels no longer parade. We coming out we like the car doors. Everything we got, we working hard for. Yeah, you should be looking for the stars for. The Hot 8 Brass Band has been one of the most popular bands hired for second lines and funerals for over two decades. In 1995, a group of friends at Forche High School, including sousaphone player Benny Pete, formed the Hot 8. 
Their appearance in two post-Katrina Spike Lee documentaries led to recognition on the national stage. Brass bands have historically been the domain of male musicians, but in 1991, a group of young women at St. Mary's Academy broke that barrier when they formed the Pinettes Brass Band. I said it ain't no city like the one I'm from, you say. The group, which includes Christy Jordan, Jazz Henry, and five other musicians, firmly established their success by winning the Red Bull Street Kings Brass Band Competition in 2013. The Pinettes remain the only all-female brass band in New Orleans. Today, more than a dozen highly visible brass bands cycle through the second line season and are hired for parties, funerals, and special events throughout the city. For these bands, playing second lines is more than a source of income. It's a 150-year-old tradition to uphold, and it's hard work. As a brass band musician, let me tell you, these second lines can drain you completely. You're playing your heart out on just about every song for an active crowd. They dance in response to how you play and vice versa, so you gotta have soul. All of this is happening during the hottest parts of the day, but you know what? It's worth it. It's for the love of the culture, and it doesn't get more real than that. For more than a century, brass bands have filled New Orleans streets with a truly unique sound and style that has captivated not only local neighborhoods, but people around the world. Today, some bands choose to pioneer a new path forward, while others maintain a connection to the past through common dress, mentors, rhythmic patterns, or even signature riffs embedded into the music they perform. We hope you've enjoyed this brief four video series on New Orleans brass bands, which serves as a companion program to our current exhibition, Dancing in the Streets. Please come visit the exhibition at 520 Royal Street or check us out online. So Dwayne, what would Second Line sound like without a brass band? I hope we never have to find out.